Vertebral body tethering is a relatively new treatment for scoliosis, and its most important characteristic is that it preserves the mobility of the spine while allowing the spinal growth. It is a minimally innovative technique. The incisions are smaller and there is less blood loss compared to open methods. If scoliosis is simplified to be growth disorder, in which the spine is growing in the wrong direction, VBT harnesses and redirects the spine to the right direction. How is that achievable? Imagine this is our curve. It has a convex side and a concave side. We place vertebral body screws on the convexity and we place a tether and tighten. The applied force results in a deformity correction. However, the aim is not to have a full correction. Instead, the remaining growth potential of the child urges more growth on the concavity, thereby lessening the deformity. Thus, a time and growth dependent spontaneous follow-up correction occurs. The incisions used for this technique are on the side of the body. We generally make six small incisions between one and three centimeters. Smaller incisions are used to introduce the camera and thoracoscopic tools, while the larger incisions are used for instrumentation and correction. Using the ports, screws are placed on the convexity of the curvature. Then the tether is placed on the tulips of each screw. Tensioning the tether achieves some deformity correction. Before tensioning, we use reducers to apply corrective and derotational forces, and we tension the tether in this position to achieve the desired correction. The most important criteria determining the appropriateness of vertebral body tethering is the remaining growth potential, because the main goal is to achieve a growth modulation to reshape the spine. That's why we believe the ideal age for this procedure is between the ages of 10 and 16. However, besides chronological age, we also look for other indicators of growth, such as growth plate assessments on the hand wrists or pelvis radiographs and Menarch status. A thorough assessment of the remaining growth potential helps us locate a golden window for the ideal timing. Vertebral body tethering could be applied in different spinal segments, except for the upper thoracic area. There can be thoracic only or thoracolumbar or lumbar only applications, depending on the location of the main curve. If both curves are structural, VBT can be applied for both, one on thoracic and one on the lumbar areas. We work together as a team. While we visualize them the surgical field, they place the screws, apply the tension on the tether and correct the deformity. During the procedure, we first open the ports where we insert our cameras for visualization and expose the vertebral bodies. By using our cameras and specially developed equipment, we expose the surgical field and provide continuous visual feedback to the spine surgeons for instrumentation. The safe application of this technique requires expertise from several medical specialities. The surgical field is very close to large vessels during this procedure. Via a multidisciplinary approach, where a couple of teams work together, we ensure safety during the surgery, which involves complex organs containing multiple tissue types. Working as a team results in lower risk and better clinical results. It's a minimally invasive technique. There are no surgical scars on the back and the small incisions stay underarmed. Bleeding is minimal and there is no need for a blood transfusion. The recovery period and return to school is faster. There is no movement restriction after the surgery. The patients can engage in all types of sports three months after surgery. The child continues to grow and the lungs continue to develop. It's a procedure that has been applied for the past 10 years. It still doesn't have long-term follow-up results. There is a risk of tether breakage, but it usually doesn't necessitate a revision surgery. Although not frequent, a brace could be necessary for two to three months after surgery. The first human application was in the US in 2006. The medical world waited a long time for the results of this patient. 
Then, in 2011 and 2012, Schreiner's Hospital in the US began a more routine application. As we had previous experimental studies regarding this, we were very interested in this procedure, and we followed the results of the case series for a while. Observing the good early results, we applied this technique for the first time outside of the US in 2014. This is our sixth year in experience. Since we had a head start, we currently are one of the most experienced centers in the world, with long follow-up results.